things about having a celebration is that it gives me an excuse to get the party poppers out and enjoy the minor rush of using domestic pyrotechnics. This science-obsessed dad clearly shares my sensibilities, but I think he might have got a little bit carried away. I'm not convinced that the correct effort to reward ratio has been realised. Obviously, if you want a bigger bang, a confetti cannon might be preferable. I don't think you're supposed to aim it at the white. She's got a point. Yeah, party poppers and confetti cannons are a lot of fun, but they're also explosive and therefore potentially dangerous, especially if you don't understand the science. They're powered by small explosions that release a large amount of energy and gas, creating a pressure wave. This gives the lightweight confetti kinetic energy to make it fly through the air. Over distance, the intensity of the pressure wave decreases due to the inverse square law, and the confetti loses speed thanks to drag in the air. And of course, when setting off a party popper or confetti cannon, it is safest to direct it away from yourself and anyone else. So with that in mind, let's put theory into practice in the real world. And what better place to begin than a festive party? Always nice to get New Year started with a bang. He has his confetti cannon the wrong way round, so the force of the pressure wave is directed straight at his body. And at close quarters, that pressure wave and the confetti carried with it still have most of their kinetic energy. Now, I'm no expert, but I suspect letting off a confetti cannon whilst riding a hoverboard is a bad idea. But not as bad an idea as aiming at someone's face. Luckily, she's fine. When the cannon goes off at point-blank range, the confetti's velocity is directed straight at his friend's face. And with the confetti moving quite fast, she's knocked off her feet. While he makes a roll for it. Nice touch. This one is shaped just like a real bottle of bubbly. Yeah, you really don't want to look down the end. Now it's time for today's science lesson. That part of the show where we take apart one specific scientific principle to see how it works. So, who can tell me what the following have in common? This gym spinner. This clumsy ring bearer. And this silly slider. Did you guess that they were all to do with angular velocity? If you did, well done, and feel free to enjoy the warm, self-satisfying glow of knowing you were correct. Angular velocity is the speed of rotating objects. Linear velocity becomes angular velocity as they rotate on the spot. They can change their angular velocity by changing their moment of inertia, how spread out their mass is. Large moments of inertia mean a slow spin, but reduce it and you increase the angular velocity. Hopefully your heads aren't spinning after that, because now it is time for a test. Let's see who's been paying attention. Question one, what is angular velocity? It's the speed that something spins at, as this careless chap is about to demonstrate. When the juice hits the fan, angular velocity accelerates it to nearly 20 miles per hour. Yet another thing not to try at home. <laughs> Question number two. How can you change your angular velocity? By changing your moment of inertia. But ideally not like that. His moment of inertia is too big, while his angular velocity is too small, meaning he gets a trip to the dentist. OK, now the third and final question. How can angular velocity relate to linear velocity? 
This skater is about to find out in a rather painful way. Angular velocity in its propellers is turned into linear velocity of the drone as a whole, giving it lift and forward propulsion, but not quickly enough. To avoid that. Traction beneath his tyre turns its angular velocity into linear velocity. But sadly, not quite enough. Class dismissed.